Welcome back to Our Community. Susie Thomas visiting with Kathy Jennings from the Canton YWCA, talking about, so far, the incredible child care yes. and um, really educational opportunities for young people in our community offered by the YWCA. Five-star program. Yes. I've heard more ex- I've heard expensive programs bragging and advertising on fewer stars than that. Yes. So it is really, uh, hats off to you. Um, how is this funded, Kathy? Well, we have several different ways that it's funded. Um, number one, we have private pay. And I will say this, um, if anyone is interested, all they would need to do is call the Y and again ask for someone in child care and they can go ahead and give you the rates. I will tell you this, um, I know we are often told by our private pay that they're some of the best around. So, um, and, and, and we do that on purpose um, because we are a nonprofit agency. Mm-hmm. So we do that on purpose. The other thing is through our Star County Job and Family Services. Um, that, of course, we receive payment for children that qualify for that program, um, whether mom's or the dad is working, going to school, whatever the qualifying is, then we'll receive payment. And a lot of times the parents, depending on their income, will need to, if they have a little higher income, they will have a weekly parent fee, which Mm -hmm. is actually good because it gets everybody then in that habit of at some point you want to see them being able then to be working a job where they can afford the child care. Mm -hmm. And you want to have them ready for that. And then the other is um, we're very blessed. We are a United Way agency. And we are one of the, um, we receive one of the largest um, support from United Way, and so we are very fortunate with that because uh, they're about a third of our budget what we receive from United Way. Mm -hmm. And then local donations and supporters who believe in us and know what we're doing, Um, and so we get, you know, private donations and foundations also help support, especially if we're doing a special initiative. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Early Head Start a couple of times. Now, what's the difference between what's already an amazing educational program and bringing in now Early Head Start? Well, about uh, three years ago now, four years ago, um, there was an opportunity that individual programs could apply for federal funding um, that has been reserved for Head Start and Early Head Start programs. And so the why, um, we got together with community partners And we put together in working with community partners um, the grant, a federal grant. It was a nationwide competition. And we were, again, very, very blessed that we received um, funding for five years um, for 155 children, ages six weeks up to three years of age. And those children are being served throughout. Star mm. County, mm. Um, at partner sites. And, of course, there's a group of them that are also served at the YW Child Care. But we have um, four child care partners throughout Star County. We have two in Alliance, one in Maslin. And then we also have um, – we did have two family in-home providers, but we are we still have one, and we are working with another provider. We're looking at up an alliance because the family child care providers can really use the support because mm-hmm. they're doing wonderful work, too. And so basically we are running our own Early Head Start program out of the YWCA. Wow. So there is a full staff running it. Um, it uh, was a year in March of this year. We had it up and operational. And once we opened that program, within three months, we were full wow, and, have, and have a waiting list. And that is really focusing on kindergarten preparation, yes? Or well, beyond it's, that? It's, it's basically the early Head Start mm-hmm. is six-week-old children oh. up to three years of age. Oh, wow. And so we're getting them in a way, yes, very much so, because we're getting them at that point where they are young, where you're going to make the biggest the biggest impact on their development right. is those first three years. Yes. And so we've got those children. And it is, I mean, it is an early Head Start Head Start program. Again, teacher qualifications, curriculum, 
um, meeting all the early Head Start standards along with licensing standards. Mm -hmm. Um, So there is, you know, it it has been um, a real challenge, but it has been wonderful because of our wonderful partners. We have community partners that provide services, um, Help Me Grow, ComQuest, uh, Canton City Health Department, the Early Childhood Resource Center. So they're coming in and adding supports and services to our children, to the staff, to the whole program. Mm. So it is it is an amazing ride. Um, and we, it, it again, it was a nationwide competition and there was only two, and I'm bragging here, but it's only because it's okay. we, it was, we were, we were blessed <laughs> and it was a community effort, a team effort, um, that there was only two in the state of Ohio that were awarded these grants that weren't already existing programs, Mm -hmm. and it was us in Ohio State. Awesome. Uh, A God thing and your hard work. I'm telling you, that that is awesome. All right. um, Folks are going to want more information. Where can they go to get more information about the child care, early head start, everything happening education-wise at the YWCA? We do have a website, of course, um, www.ywcacanton.com. Um, and then there is on that website, you'll go in and you'll see for the child care. And also there is a for the Early Head Start program. Or they can just call the Y at 330-453-7644 and ask to speak to someone about the child care or the Early Head Start because those are two separate programs. So That's Fantastic. Yes. All right. Well, the thing that maybe more people are aware of is that you have been providing housing for um, women and children mm-hmm. and families for some time. Uh, tell us a little bit of the history of that and the need in our area. Since 1986, um, we have between 86 and 87, we have been running, and it is the largest um, homeless shelter in Stark County for women and children. Uh, the why the building was uh, back in the 1950s, and that was actually the what originally it was. It was dormitory style living, individual rooms with a community kitchen and bathrooms um, on our third floor, and it was for young ladies coming to downtown Canton to um, get their first job. And mm-hmm. this was in the 50s, and the 60s, and the early 70s. By the mid 80s, um, we were they were noticing at the time that the young ladies that were coming in didn't have family supports and didn't have anywhere to go once they left. And so, again, the Y stepped up to the plate. Um, community stepped up to the plate, United Way, and there was grants that were with it the Y went after, and um, we turned the housing then into a homeless shelter for women and children. We have um, 34 rooms at the Y, um, and we can house single women and a mom with children um, at the Y because we, some of the rooms, um, they each have their own individual room and we furnish them. There's a nice bed, there's a desk, there's a small refrigerator. Um, some of the rooms do have microwaves if they have children mm-hmm. um, because uh, there is a community kitchen on that floor where they, they can cook. Um, but they at least do have their own separate room with a sink and a lot of storage area. And so we do have those rooms. Of course, the single rooms are smaller than the rooms where moms come in with children. And we just put extra beds and cribs, whatever we need, whatever the family makeup is. We do have two, two case managers that work and work with each one that comes in. And what we do with that is that, you know, we have them there. And the longest they can stay at our shelter is 90 days. And right now, with our funding um, through the state, we are being pushed to go to a 60-day shelter. And so, really? yeah. So it is, is that to a get a quick them. of a turnaround to get someone back on their feet. Exactly. And so, but one of the things, again, that the Y has looked at um, and is now has in place is that we also have what's called rapid rehousing. Mm-hmm. And we have permanent supportive housing, which if we can roll our families or are single women right into one of those because they qualify. Now, we do not do the qualification. All of our homeless, um, all of those come through a centralized intake, and it's called the homeless hotline. 
And so what they have to do is they have to call the homeless hotline, and then the homeless hotline does a prioritization list after they talk to them, and they are put on the prioritization list, and then we go in to the website Mm -hmm. and pull them off the prioritization list as they come to the top of the list. So if once we get them and there's assessment that is done and they qualify for either what we call rapid rehousing or a permanent supportive housing, then, you know, we've got those programs that we actually have staff right in-house that can work those programs. Or if they don't, then our case managers from our homeless shelter do work, of course, with, because we have some people that, you know, the car may have broke down, they may have got laid off, and they had a medical bill or medication that they had to get for their child. And it could be me or you. Um, exactly. Just you know, enough bad things. All exactly. at once, a perfect storm, anyone could find themselves in that position. Most could dig themselves out pretty quickly, but some, are, it's just been it, that spiral down yes. that it's very, very difficult to get it turned around. I, that's why I want to mm-hmm. go to a word that you just said. I want to circle back here. You said permanent supportive housing. Um you don't just say, okay, your 90 days are up, get into a house permanently, bye-bye, be well and prosper. Um, you offer support and help mm-hmm. to families to really help them as they're struggling to get back on their feet. How do you do yes. that? Through our permanent supportive housing. Now, through the permanent supportive housing, um, the Y itself has almost 100 units, and they are wow. individual apartments. Um, and we have also apartments that are... Um, Two bedroom, three bedroom for families also. And so what happens is is that once they qualify and they get in one of those programs, there are case managers, there are support services at those buildings that work directly with them. And many of those qualify for um, there is federal grants and we work with uh, Metropolitan Stark Metropolitan Housing and through our continuum of care that they may be paying the rent Mm -hmm. and so that they are living there. Um, And once they're in, and, you know, of course, there are rules they have to follow. Right. Um, But once they're in, and they can be there for forever. And then if they don't need quite that level, um, then we also have a rapid rehousing and our case managers, and that can be either finding either in the permanent supportive or working with a system of wonderful landlords mm-hmm. um, okay. here in Star County. Our, our staff have developed a wonderful group of landlords. And in doing that, our case managers also work with them up to a year, even if they go into that housing. Almost 100 units. Do you find you're almost always full? Oh, constantly there's a waiting list, wow. unfortunately. What do you need, Kathy? I know you've said that kitchen is there, mm-hmm. pots and pans are always a need. Fill us in. How can we help? We have, we're, again, with our space there at the Y, we have a donation room. And our donation room, it is amazing. To tell you how big it is, it used to be a three-lane bowling alley. And it has been renovated into this very large room. We are very fortunate. We have a wonderful lady that is on staff that as donation comes in, anything from clothing um, to shoes to coats, um, gloves, hats, um, to household items, pots, pans, glasses, silverware, um, dishes, bedding, curtains, blinds, anything curtain you would rods, need. anything you would need to set up a house. Mm-hmm. Look at your home, see what it takes, and anything like that is what we accept at the Y. And there's somebody at the Y, Monday through Friday, from 8 in the morning until... Now, our maintenance man is there to help unload from like 8 in the morning until early afternoon, but we're there. Awesome. All right, let's give that website one more time. Uh, it's the ywcacanton.org. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Kathy Jennings, CEO of the Canton YWCA, thank you for everything you do in our community. Thank you, Susie. We're very blessed to be there at the Y.